if you want to deploy a Kubernetes cluster with a language that you're comfortable with, like Golang, and you don't want to do a YAML or JSON or HCL, well, in this video, we're going to take a look at exactly that. How to create an Azure Kubernetes Services or AKS cluster using Go and Pulumi. With that, let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to talk a little bit about Pulumi, getting started with Pulumi, and then we're also going to look at the code and run the code to create an Azure Kubernetes Services cluster. Now, you may be wondering, what even is Pulumi? How do you use it? What is it actually used for? Well, here's the thing. There are a ton of people that maybe don't want to use infrastructure as code using, say, HCL or JSON or YAML. Instead, they want to work in the cloud using a language that they know about. They can use Go or C Sharp or JavaScript to actually create those resources in the cloud. And that's exactly what Pulumi does for you. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to pulumi.com and then you're going to click the sign in button. So as you can see, I'm actually already signed in. So let me open up a different browser here and we're going to see what it looks like when you're actually not signed into anything. So I'm going to go to Pulumi and then I'm going to click on Modern Infrastructure as Code Pulumi. I'm going to click sign in. So here you have a few different options that you can use. And if you're a new user, you can sign up. However, I would say that the easiest way to go about this is if you have a GitHub account already or GitLab or Atlassian or something like that, use one of those. And then what you can do is you can sign in with one of those accounts. So for example, what I've done is I've signed in with my GitHub account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this out and I have a bunch of different projects here, but let's go ahead and create a new project. So I'm going to click on new project and then we're going to choose the cloud where we want our product to actually go. So I'm going to choose Azure and then of course, good old go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click next. And then from here, we're going to give this a new project name. We're going to say KS deploy to Azure. And then we'll give this a little description. KS deployment. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click create project. So now one of the really cool things about Pulumi is they give you the instructions right off the bat for Linux, for Windows, for Mac. You're never just, you know, roaming around for documentation. It's right here for you and ready to go. So if you don't have it installed, for example, if you're on Windows, you can use Chocolatey Package Manager. If you're on Mac OS, you can use Brew. If you're on Linux, you'll see that there's a curl here that you can use. And then you can create the new directory and then create the actual project. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this command to the clipboard. I'm going to open up my terminal, move this over here. I'm going to CD up actually to my desktop, and then I'm going to paste this. And as we can see, created a new directory called KS deploy to Azure, and then I've CD'd into it as well. And then I'm going to pull down the project. So let's go ahead and do that. So now what this is going to do is it's going to install all the dependencies, like any packages and stuff that are needed, and it's going to pull down that project. So now what we can do is let's actually open it up in VS Code here. So right off the bat, what's really cool is you have your Go mod, you have a Go sum, and then what you also have is you have a dev.yaml here, which shows the configuration, and then the pulumi.yaml, which shows the name of the project, the runtime that's being used, and the description here. Now let's open up this main.go. As you can see, there's already a configuration in here for you, and this is just like a task configuration. So it's creating a resource group, and then it's creating a storage account. But what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna get rid of all of this, and then I'm gonna start pasting in some code that I already wrote, and we're gonna go through it line by line. So the first thing is, I'm gonna do my package and my imports here. Let me just zoom in here a bit so you can see it a little bit better. All right, and then I'm gonna create my first main function. Now my main function, it's gonna be really straightforward. It's gonna be calling the KS cluster function, which we're gonna to use to create the Kubernetes cluster. It's gonna have three string parameters. First is gonna be the name of the AKS cluster. Second is gonna be the resource group name that you want the AKS cluster to exist in. And then third is gonna be an Azure client ID. We're also gonna to have to pass in an Azure client secret as well, which we'll definitely do. So I'm gonna click enter here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start defining my function, KS cluster function. All right, we have that. We're gonna hit enter here. So this is gonna be our function that's actually kicking off the deployment of AKS. And then inside of that function, we're gonna have an anonymous function that's gonna run Pulumi run. So 
So let's go ahead and close that off. Now this Pulumi run, what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to pass in a whole bunch of different container services and different types of functions that are in that container service package to deploy our AKS cluster. And we can also see here that we have our context, we're using a Pulumi context, and then there's a return type of error. So let me just go over here and we're gonna start pasting in our arguments. Let's go ahead and paste that in. Again, we're gonna close off that bracket here. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna initialize two variables, KAS variable and the ER variable. And as you can see, we're using container service from right here from that package. We're gonna use the function new Kubernetes cluster. We're gonna pass in the context. We're gonna pass in the cluster name. And then we're gonna use a pointer to point to container services and then the type or the struct of Kubernetes cluster args. And then we're gonna pass on all of our arguments there. And those arguments are gonna be things like the node count and the Kubernetes version uh, API and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So the first three pieces of code here are gonna be for the location, the resource group name, and the DNS prefix. So it's gonna be all plumi.string. We're gonna be passing in a whole bunch of strings. We're gonna be passing in the location, the resource group name, and then the DNS prefix. And what I've done was I just concatenated the cluster name plus throwing DNS in at the end. The next thing we're gonna have is our service principle. So the service principle, again, there's gonna be a pointer and it's gonna be pointing to container service dot Kubernetes cluster service principle args that type, and then it wants client ID and a client secret. Now, if you aren't familiar with these, these are from the app registration in Azure, which you can find in the portal. So here's another thing. As you can see, I'm passing in the client secret as plain text here. This is just to show you how it works. There's so many different scenarios that you can use for this. Um, for example, you can use passing it in as OS args at runtime in a DevOps pipeline. You can pass those in as an argument and stuff like that. There are many different ways. This, I just wanted to show you how to get up and running specifically. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pass in a secret. Okay, so I have that secret officially passed in. So now what I can do is I can start creating the arguments for the node pool for like the Kubernetes API version and the nodes and all that stuff. Okay, and as we can see that we have this default node pool argument and it's gonna be passing in again, another pointer to container service with the Kubernetes cluster default node pool arg struct. And then that's gonna be passing in a few different values here. We're gonna be passing in the name, the VM size for the worker nodes to run on, the minimum node count, the maximum node count. We want that auto scaling enabled so we can either go from one to three. And then also the orchestrator version, which is the Kubernetes API version. We're gonna use the newest one that's available on Azure right now, 1.19.3. And then to finish things off, we have our error handling here. So if the error, aka this variable right here, does not equal nil, it's gonna print out the error for us, and then else, it's gonna print out the KS variable right here, which is gonna start our creation of our cluster. So with that, let's go ahead and actually spin this bad boy up. So I'm gonna to go to my terminal here, I'll clear my screen, ls here to make sure that I'm in the right directory, we see our main.go, so now I'm gonna run plumi up. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna start our initial configuration. And we can see that the plan here is running. We can see the info, we can see the name, the type. And then we have an option here. Do we wanna update? Yep, we do wanna update this project. So I'm gonna click the up arrow and click on yes. And now what we can do is we can open up this UI actually, and we can see this thing live. So let's go right here. We can actually see everything that's running live right from the UI. One of the really, really cool things about Pulumi is this right here. Like you can actually see the changes live. You can see the timeline here, any configurations that are happening, the environment itself. But I do like to sit here and take a look at the changes and kind of see what happens. So let's give this a few minutes, of course. It's an AKS cluster, so it will take a little bit of time to spin up, but we will be right back with the created AKS cluster. And the cluster has been created successfully, as we can see right here. Let's head over to the Azure portal and check that out. So I'm at the Azure Kubernetes Services portal. I'm gonna click refresh. And as we can see, our newly created AKS cluster is available. So with that, that is how you can successfully create an Azure Kubernetes Service cluster using the power of infrastructure software with Pulumi and Go. Thank you so much for watching.